Okay. Now um, I will show you some things that I got finished in the last couple months and have framed. They're all, yeah, they're all things that I framed myself at home. So, um, you know, inexpensive. I think they, every one of them has a thrift store frame, which I like to do. Okay, the first one is A&E, and this is a pattern by Brenda Gervais. And this was my car pattern. I took it in the car. I usually take my brother to the store. He doesn't drive. So I take him to the store on Saturday and I sit in the car and stitch while he gets all his grocery shopping done. And lo and behold, after a little while, it was done. This one went pretty fast, I have to say. And it says, um, the serpent deceived me and I ate. I love that. I love biblical stuff. So here it is. I framed it in a thrift store frame that I bought and it didn't quite fit right. It's very tight. So I know like uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher, she likes them tight. I like them tight too. <laughs> um, that's really tight. But um, there was a little room so I put some vintage lace and some old buttons from, I, I inherited my mother's button box so I've got some awesome, awesome old buttons these days and uh, hangs in my living room and I look at it whenever I watch TV and I love it. I love it so much and I love the way it was framed. I did paint the frame kind of a brown gray and it turned out so good. I love it. And then the next one is an old pattern of mine and I had finished this um, with, this is called Robin Redbreast and for the pattern originally I finished it with what's called a nun stitch and so it's like a, let's see if I can get close. It's like a, um, there you can see. It's like a pulled thread stitch. It's a way of hemming. And so I just hemmed the whole sampler. And then for the pattern, I just had thrown it on a piece of fabric and took the picture. So I never really had it framed. So then I finally decided I wanted to frame it and I got a piece of fabric and I sewed it on. So I basted it on with a, a sewing thread that matches the linen so you can't see it at all and then I framed it in this is another thrift store frame and it turned out so awesome I actually like re this is a pattern you can buy digitally in my Etsy shop so I actually replaced all the old pictures with the new pictures of this new framing job I love it it turned out so good and this also I look at every day and I just enjoy it. It's one of the few patterns that I look at and I don't see anything I would change or some of my patterns, <laughs> I don't always have them hanging on my walls because I look at them and I think, oh, why did I do that? I should have used this color or blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, that's not very restful. So, but this one, no problem. I really like the way it looks and it was kind of based off of the Rhode Island sampler. So, this would be like the middle of those old Rhode Island bulge samplers. They're all from a specific school. And um, in the old samplers, all around the top would be a big floral border. There's usually like a basket, or I mean like a, yeah, like a basket here and a basket here, and then the flowers grow up around. But I just did the middle part for the sampler. And I am planning, I am obsessed with the Rhode Island samplers. I love them. I'll talk to about a little bit about that later and I am planning on designing some more that are similar to that and then the next thing is this is um, a family tree sampler and this is um my mother stitched this it says 1996 and this is her initials SFS her name was Shirley and she, we're coming up upon, I think tomorrow is the one year anniversary of when she passed away. And this, so she had stitched this for me. And when she stitched it um, in 1996, my youngest daughter, Isabel, the one that was on the video with me before, she wasn't on here, you know, obviously, because she wasn't born yet. And um, so she was born in 1999. So I had taken it out of its original frame and I stitched Isabel and her birth date, and then I never reframed it. And it just like sat in my stash for years and years. And I came across it about a month ago, and I thought, this is so pretty. 
why don't I have this out on display? It, it obviously fits in an eight by 10. Like, come on, how hard is that? So um, I went, this frame is from Walmart. <laughs> so I went and got the frame and then I had a piece of eight by 10 foam core cut at Hobby Lobby and I laced it up and stuck it in there and I love it. I'm so happy to have this out in my house and every time I look at it, I think of my mother and you know, it's an old fashioned style and it's on Ada. She never really did stitch on linen, but um, you know, I love it because it's something she picked and it just looks like her. Like she loved, you know, pretty little florals and she always had kind of a um, Victorian slash innocent style in the way she decorated. She loved yellow and gingham and things like that. And so it just, it really reminds me of her and I'm so happy to have it on display in my house. And I love the white frame. I like to do a lot of white in my house because my house is old and it's dark and we don't have an open floor plan or anything like that. So a lot of light doesn't get in. So these lighter things look really good in my house. So down here it has the date my husband and I were married, 1984, I know, because we were like children. Um, October 27th, it's Ann and Gary. And then these are our kids, so Chelsea is the oldest, then Lucas, then Aiden, and then Isabel. And I love it. And then my mom's initials and the date that she stitched it. Anyway, love this. So happy with it. I'm so sorry I left it sticking in my stash forever with just, you know, fading away. <laughs> okay, and the next thing I finished was this tiny little piece by Brenda Gervais. One of my favorite designers, can you tell? I've been doing a lot of her stuff this year. Um, this is that little um, Ode to the Ort basket, and it came, this was a market release from 2017. Came with this little basket, and then you stitch the top. So there's the top, and you finish it, which I didn't do the best job finishing it. Oh, there's a needle minder in there. I was wondering what happened to that. I can't remember where I got this needle minder. It's the same people that um, Caroline is ta always talking about. Remy, somebody, Remy. Anyway, there's the needle minder that I lost. <laughs> Anyway, so isn't it cute though? I love it. This little basket. Are you kidding me? And then the little lid and I finished it with just a book paper from um, Pride and Prejudice. And uh, yeah, it's so cute. I love having it out. And I did all the painting and everything. So cute, cute, cute. Okay, so those are my FFOs. Um, I'll be right back with my Stitch Mania. Um, I really should call it wimp mania because I, you know, people are coming up with, oh, I'm going to do 18 um, starts for the first, you know, for 2018 or 31 starts for every day in May. And I thought, oh, May is the fifth month of the year, so I'll do five starts. <laughs> so I did wimp mania because I just couldn't handle 18 starts. Although next year, this was my first whip mania or stitch mania um, and I really had a good time doing it. it was so much fun so next year I think I will go for the big 19 starts uh, we'll see but it was a lot of fun and after I did my first five starts I wished I had done more and planned more and got more things kitted up but anyway we'll see if I can get any of these things done one of them I know there's just no possible way to even get it done in a year because it's a BAP, which is a big A star star project. And you know, just what I need is more BAPs, but whatever. I am one of those people that I just am drawn to the big projects for some reason. I just love them. I love them. I really want to do um, His Eyes on the Sparrow. I really want to do Anna Forest Grew. I live in a tiny house. I don't know what I'm going to do with these things after I get them stitched. There's no room for them anywhere in my house. I have to hang them on the ceiling or something, but I love them. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> 